Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Dreamscapes. Today, we have our friend Anne Swanson from Hawaii. She is the author of Meditation for the Real World. You can find that at meditationfortherealworld.com. That's, I just think that's funny. That Pause for laughter. <laughs> We're gonna get we're gonna get right back to her in two seconds. Memorable, uh, right? It is. It, it, it's on the nose. That's what I was trying to think of. It's like, whoa, whoa how ironic that that is the actual <laughs> the actual title. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, we're right back to her in two seconds. For my part, would you kindly like, share, subscribe, tell your friends? Uh, always need more volunteer dreamers. You can tell it's been a couple of weeks since I had a new episode because no one's reaching out. Literally, I will talk to anyone. I want to talk to you. You got a dream? We can make an episode. It's that easy. Um, 17 currently available works of historical dream literature. The most recent dream, uh, the fabric of dreams, excuse me, by Catherine Taylor Craig, uh, lovingly recreated, reproduced and enhanced by myself, if I uh, may say so. Um, all this and more, of course, at Benjamin, the including MP3 downloadable versions of these, uh, podcasts. You can take the, uh, take the wizard with you wherever you wander. I love alliteration. Um, also if you'd head on over to Benjamin, the dream where I'm trying to build a community and where I would prefer to receive any sustaining donations. Uh, it's attached to my rumble account where you can also find my, um, interviews and, uh, video game stuff. I, I never promote the video games, 5 PM to 8 PM Pacific. I play video games. So stop on in. That is the longest introduction of me ever. It, that's enough about me back then. And thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. I'm so glad to be here today. Very nice. So I didn't ask uh, too many questions in the beginning, uh, but then I never really do. Like beforehand, I just try and get, how do you want me to introduce you and what's what books or projects are you working on? Um, so you, I see in the background there, you have other books, The Science of Yoga, and you've got your new one. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you are a yoga practitioner, a, um, um, I mean, say a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm a yoga therapist and I also am a meditation teacher and that's what my recent book is about. But the first book is Science of Yoga and it has really beautiful images of of the poses and the science, the fascinating science behind yoga. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, yoga made a big impact in my life, but the part of yoga that's made the biggest impact is really meditation because I was not a naturally chill person, as you're going to hear with my dreams. <laughs> I've had a lot of anxious dreams. I've actually had quite a few sleepwalking incidents also oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> with dreams. Um, not, so not uncommon. I was not yeah. naturally chill. And meditation supported me through um, that and uh, has really helped me deal with, you know, I, I even would pass out in the most inopportune times. Mm. So Meditation has been critical for me to be just like functioning humans. And if I can meditate, then anybody can. Yeah, that's fascinating. So I mentioned my historical dream literature, and this is what I what I consider my, you know, personally constructed masterclass in how to do this thing right. What is this thing that I'm doing? How does it work? What does it look like? How do we define it? All, all that good stuff. So one of the, a few of the fascinating things is how they've tr tried to categorize the different phenomenon that occur around sleep and that goes into things like narcolepsy and somnambulism sleepwalking and those can be related uh, uh, very much too so mm -hmm. you'll have a lot of people who have narcolepsy where they uncontrollably pass out fall asleep in the middle of the, while they're driving just mm -hmm. nap time that can also be related to um sleepwalking incidents where their where their body is falling asleep when it should be awake and acting awake when it should be asleep when that when that um disconnect switch is flipped uh between um what i'm experiencing internally and controlling through nerves the muscle muscle actions that are associated with the thoughts um so okay uh, long story short coming coming back around to you did you find that a practice of yoga for you if affected somnambulism and, and narcoleptic tendencies i think managing my anxiety in the end uh, is what has really affected it. My quality of sleep is so much better. Mm, like yeah. my my bed calculates my sleep. I got 100% last night, 100% the night before. So I'm really excited that my quality of sleep has gone up so much uh, over the years. And I really credit that to meditation and mind-body practices. And it, if you improve your sleep, it can improve so much in your life. <laughs> Oh, no, absolutely. It's like uh, not optional. 
it, it's something human. It's like eating and breathing. You, you can't just stop yes. and be healthy. Uh, you have to do these things and you're getting your diet and your quality of sleep affecting things and, and your level of exercise too. So yeah. I, of course I don't have all the answers uh, uh, yet working on it. But uh, one way I do that is is through these interviews with folks who I think each have a piece of the puzzle that I'm trying to pull together into my own mm. understanding. So my my connected thought was that because narcolepsy and sleepwalking very much appear to be physical phenomenon, not psychological phenomenon in in that sense, even though there's a there's a brain soul connection to um experiences of anxiety and stuff like you can influence those things behaviorally you get and then they can be brought on behaviorally too long story short but my my thought was that there may be some benefit to the physical practice of yoga in f um, f addressing the physical causes of sleepwalking and narcolepsy maybe that's just not something you've run across but i yeah. figured but i thought to ask so you know, it's said that when there's a problem in the body, whether it be the narcolepsy, which I never thought of as a problem in the body or uh, mm -hmm. sleepwalking or chronic pain, you know, the solution is in the mind. And when there's a problem in the mind, the solution's in the body. Sure. Right. So that makes a lot of sense to me. And it's the mind body connection is so strong that also the anxiety tied in there, you know, my physical uh, exercise and movement practice would help my mind. And yeah. then the, the meditation practice does help my body. I also uh, have suffered from chronic pain since I was a mm. teenager. And the biggest impact has been meditation on my chronic pain relief, which also helps Absolutely. sleep, by the way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, that and that's the, uh, the other direction to go with this is that there's there's a physical experience of anxiety i mean when we're when we say we are feeling anxious it isn't just an emotion like even our emotional states have have a kind of tangible physical yeah yeah you feel it in your chest there there's a um i'm playing this stupid little game on my phone it's called robot miner and you dig 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 down and there's brown blocks you can dig through and there's gray like granite rocks you can't dig through well if you dig under one of those gray rocks you can't dig it will fall and crush you and if you're going too fast or you're not paying attention all of a sudden you'll find yourself flattened and i get a i get a jolt i'm like oh no and I feel that. I'm like, what just happened? Nothing happened. I did not get hit with a rock. I watched my character get hit with a rock and I felt it physically. So there's definitely yeah. that mind body connection from the idea of, you know, if you're feeling physical symptoms of anxiety, say, and you're trying to fall asleep, good luck. It's not happening. You're going to, your, your mind's spinning. Your, 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 your gut's upset. <sighs> um, I mean, maybe you could say a little bit about how that uh, changed for you, what you were experiencing before and then how meditation <sighs> influenced it. Yeah, because um, I came first to the physical practice of yoga and Tai Chi Qi Gong. And the physical is what attracted me and probably because of my anxiety, mm -hmm. it, it gave me that relief. But, you know, we'd get to the end of the yoga class and they'd have you lying down and guide you through a, a relaxation, a meditation where you'd sit at the end. And that's the point where I'd be looking at my watch. It is time to go. I have things to do. This mm -hmm. is a waste of time. Like I was not a natural meditator. But I remember one particular time where the teacher did a technique that helped me be able to get a glimpse of what that that meditative experience is like. And we can do it right now. Sure. It's very physical. So you're going to take your shoulders and squeeze them up toward your ears and pucker your lips and squeeze those muscles, those muscles that are often so stressed and huh, release, drop them down. We'll do it two more times. Mm -hmm. You can even sigh it out. So inhale, squeeze. Oh, exhale, release. Last time, squeeze. Squeeze that tension out, 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 and oh, drop shoulders down. The shoulders mm. dropping, the head gently lifting up. If you're watching the video, you probably see our shoulders are a little lower. You might feel that in yourself. I do. Yeah. It feels perhaps like a weight has been taken off your shoulders. Now I know what's happening physiologically. If we zoom into the muscle fibers, when they squeeze really intensely like that, afterwards they have a capacity to lengthen more. So they're mm. literally relaxing and lengthening more. You didn't know you were tense up in that area probably, but you're teaching your body the difference between tense and relax. 
And that contrast, then your body's like, oh, wow, it does feel better to relax it. Let's try that. And we would do that head to toe. Imagine doing that, your feet, your legs, the whole body. Mm. And then afterwards, I was like, whoa, I can finally relax my mind now that my body has relaxed. It's like a natural muscle relaxant. I speak of this in Science of Yoga. Also, I speak of it in my new book, Meditation for the Real World. It's called Progressive Muscle Relaxation. Mm. And there's science to support it for two main things, anxiety and sleep. Go nice. figure. Yeah. Um, so that that was really the moment where I was like, oh, okay, this meditation thing, maybe I should really stick around for this part of the class and not check out. Yeah, very cool. I think a lot of us need that, especially maybe if you're like me, there's, um, I, I call myself a credulous skeptic. I'm willing to believe just about anything, mm. but I need some evidence. So if someone just says, uh, look at this, it's like magic. And I'm like, well, okay, I naturally kind of believe, okay, maybe magic is possible, but yeah, how does it work? Uh, and really, what does it do? Yeah. Does it have the, is it snake oil or does it have the intended result? And it feels like it does. And I mean, certainly you're here to say it worked for me at the very least. And, you know, when, when it comes to a lot of these practices, it is not... It's not a drug that's going to alter your body forever, the chemistry of your brain. It's not a surgery that's going to cut you open and rearrange you. It's 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 basically got no downside to give it a try. You do some yoga. It's not for you. You, you move on. It, no harm done. Uh, it's one of those things. You where, know what, yeah, though? Say, it, it will alter your brain chemistry significantly. Fair enough. Our, inside our brain, we have access to all the pharmaceuticals and the chemicals that we synthesize, right? Like, well, let's take, for example, uh, serotonin. Let's take, for example, melatonin. Everybody takes melatonin supplements. Well, if you actually watch the sunrise and then go out on a midday walk and then watch the sunset, like take little meditation breaks, mm. you know, walking meditation in the middle of the day, sunrise, take a few deep breaths before you have your first cup of coffee. Notice the blues in the sky that tells your brain to release some cortisol, which is actually really good in the beginning of the day because it wakes you up. And then when you watch the sunset, there's like reds in the sky and oranges and pinks. Yeah. And that tells your brain to release melatonin naturally. Now, if you go back in and you look at your phone and you don't have the red light filter on your phone, the night shift, then what's going to happen is all that blue light is going to ruin it. All your melatonin will be gone. Mm. Flash on the bathroom light, it's gone. You want to keep the lights dim after sunset in their house too. But the actually literally going in nature, watching the sunset, taking a powerful pause, integrating a little meditation into that, that's going to help your sleep. Um, so, uh, those sort of like science backed benefits, you know, I like to, I integrate it into meditation for the real world to convince people like us, these skeptics that are like, you know, I need to know why I need to know how it works. And then I'm going to be more motivated to practice and also ways that I can enhance it so that I can like go deeper in it. So we do have access to all these chemicals that are in our brain and meditation changes our neurobiology, neurochemistry mm -hmm. um, immediately and long term. It helps you balance it. Fair enough. I think that's, yeah, and I didn't mean to discount that connection. I think you're very right that that it does, that it's a, a more, I, I would say it probably does it in a different way than than taking a drug does, so to speak. And it's one of those things, or, or yeah. maybe not exactly, but but I was I was aiming more towards the idea of the risk factor. You know, you're, you're at less of a risk yeah. trying yoga than you are trying an, a new drug you've never taken before. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You're going you're, you're gonna to do side less. Effects. Certainly, yeah. You're going to do it without, without side effects. Side effect is uh, I might be Positive a little tired. Positive side effects. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the worst thing, you might be a little sore from stretching and you might be uh, a little tired <laughs> yeah. from holding a pose. I mean, the, the, we get over these things. But it, yeah, but it isn't like... Um, that was the distinction I was trying to draw, but uh, but you're very yeah, you're very yeah. right to to point out that that nuance. I think it is absolutely valid. Um, one thing I was going to say about your books, though, is that that looks like um, uh, they look like books you'd find in in a college course. They look like a college textbook. I mean, mm -hmm. were you kind of aiming towards that uh, kind of rigorous, you know, in di the diagrams and the explanations and, and things like that? Yeah. No, it. It has the diagrams. Actually, I just opened the diagrams about brain waves, which we should talk about in a moment. For sure. Because meditation can put you into the same brain waves as deep sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but the book, this new book is really for anyone. It is densely packed with the research, but in an accessible way that's kind of like fun to read as an adult. You know, we like picture books too. I had a New York Times illustrator work on this with me. And, and, 
it's got the science for the skeptics out there, but also the step-by-step practices so that you can actually apply it. Like most books out there are either written by a previous monk or neuroscientist, and one may not be practical in its application and the other may not include the application, just the why. So I really wanted to incorporate both. Like why do it? And then here's how you do it to help your sleep. There's a whole section on improving sleep. And here's how you do it to help anxiety or loss of a loved one. Or when you're feeling like overwhelmed because you're doom scrolling or you feel FOMO, there's meditations for everything in the book. Very cool. Those are a lot of the great, great, uh, significant, I would say, sources of stress for a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, is, yeah, that, that, the you know, the doom scrolling and the, oh, it's, it's all, it's all so terrible out there in the world. And, uh, you know, and then the, 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 the FOMO and the keeping up with the Joneses, Joneses type of stuff is like, oh, look at all this fun other people are having, look what other people have been able to accomplish. And we get down on ourselves setting so many of these expectations that I think a lot of the, um, what, what's another thing that, uh, so in a, in a slightly different but connected, connected vein, there's a lot of body work done with folks that say have emotional dysregulation type of stuff, like mm-hmm. in, the, in the border yep. borderline category and a lot of getting in touch with your body, progressive relaxation, physical techniques that, that people can do to kind of get them reconnected to the physical, uh, get, get them out of their head and into their body in a way. Um, I, I think that's a fantastic way to do it. And a lot of people intuitively understand the idea that uh, if you just put down what you're working on and go take a walk. I mean, it gets you away from your obsession with the project and your frustration with what's right in front of you, but it also has, but, but you have to physically re- relocate. You got to do s- some action with your body. Uh, go, go ahead. Yeah. You know, we're not wired to have the like change of context that we have when we're scrolling. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, a war going on in the other side of the world. And then all of a sudden you see your ex is now married with children and you have to process that. And then you see you didn't get invited to this party. And it's just one thing after the other. Like our brains are wired to handle tree, bird, <laughs> Person, one or two at a time. Person, one or two people, right? That's how we're truly wired. And so it's overwhelming to process that and and it it puts a weight on us. And and we are also constantly scanning for danger. That's completely natural is to kind of have that negative bias. Mm. Uh, Our brains have a negativity bias. And so it makes us worry more. But instead of being worried that the saber-toothed tiger is going to get us, we're now releasing the same chemical cocktail when we look at that stressful email. As if a saber-toothed tiger is coming after us, but it's not going to kill us, that email. So meditation gives us some perspective to be able to step back and observe and not believe our thoughts. It's not stopping your thoughts. It's stopping believing those thoughts. Yeah. That's a, that's a big thing that, uh, well, I mentioned but before we started recording, I spent some time working in, uh, um, inpatient psychiatric. And <clears throat> I, I always tried to, I mean, over time, what I tried to do is what's the most important thing I could tell this person right now? Cause I may never talk to them again. I'm, I'm a shift staff mm-hmm. who is caring for this person for a brief time. I've got a brief moment to, to connect with them, to understand where they're coming from and what they, what, what might be most useful. And one of the things r- related to that, that I would tell people is, um, sometimes you got to get an idea out of your head and just whole look at it, you know, it, it, and you're not going to, you're not going to push it away. You're not going to hold it close as if it's necessarily true or you're validate it. You're just going to say, okay, that's a thing. I don't know what to do with that thing. And you don't have to know what to do with that thing right away. You can just let it be what it is. Oh, I had a thought. Hmm. I'll just let it be a thought. That was a, that, that was a big exactly. help to a lot of people. Uh, is that kind of what you were talking about? That's- exactly. That's what meditation is. People think it's stopping your thoughts or chasing after them. It's instead, just observing them and naturally they do slow down, right? When you have mm-hmm. it sitting there in front of you, it just, it not, you don't have to do that. It will naturally happen and you stop believing it. You become an observer. It's not like you're in that, you know, conversation where you're just engulfed in it. Like you're noticing it through the day. We are so engulfed in this negative often mindset, you know, this voice in our head that's often telling us very critical negative things that we forget that, you know, we don't have to listen to it. (laughs) It's, it's not us. It's, you can observe it and that by nature will start to slow it down and change its potency. So you, 
stop believing it. Yeah, definitely. Well, you'd mentioned uh, a minute ago, and I, it just came back to me, and uh, so I didn't want to forget, but the idea of the uh, brainwave states, you, you wanted to talk yes. about that for a minute? Yeah. Uh, so meditation brings us into brainwaves strategically. So right now we're in beta brainwaves. We're speaking. We're, you know, if you're listening to this, you're listening and evaluating it and, and taking note. And that's that like active state of mind we're often in. Meditation immediately brings us into alpha brainwaves. That's that more relaxed state. And we can also go into uh, theta brainwaves, which are typically dominantly seen like in children. It's really like creative, spontaneous sort of thinking. Meditation does bring us into that. Now, certain types of meditation bring us into what is only typically seen in deep sleep, and that's that delta brainwave state. And that's that state of rejuvenation and recovery. And one particular type of meditation where you're lying down called yoga nidra, uh, sometimes called non-sleep deep rest. It's where you're lying down and you're guided. Often you even do that progressive muscle relaxation as part of it. And it's longer, um, these sort of practices, but they put you in a sleep-like state. It's kind of crazy because you'll be awake to observe going into delta brain waves. And you'll kind of like you know that twitch you get right when you fall asleep, but you mm -hmm. catch yourself, you get that. And then you're like, whoa, I'm, I'm asleep right now. Like my body is asleep. My mind is asleep, but I'm able to observe what it's like to be in that healing state, uh, which is a really cool thing. So that's pretty recent research that they found that yoga nidra and certain types of meditation bring us into that recovery delta brainwave state. Nice. Well, I think that's probably the most natural transition into the dream discussion. I mean, you brought us uh, some ah. recurring dreams. Uh, and, uh, you know, so speaking of that state of mind, we can look into what may have been going on in your mind at the time. Uh, you feel ready to uh, ready to share that? I do. I know. Very I cool. have like so many dreams. We might have to. I have the recurring dream, but then I have the sleepwalking dream, which might be a funny story to cover too. Sure. Well, I think it's, it shows the anxiety. <laughs> it's always up to the guest. What, whatever you feel is your most pressing concern, whatever feels the most relevant. I mean, I wouldn't worry about being entertaining. I think all of it is pretty fascinating because we've got a mystery. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on here? Uh, so either way, we got a yeah. mystery to solve. I, I find them all fascinating. So um, if it's more important to you to kind of put a put a pin in the in the recurring dreams, we can do that. Uh, like if you haven't. Let's do the recurring yeah. first, um, because I started having this as soon as I could think, like as a toddler. Benjamin the Dream Wizard wants to help you pierce the veil of night and shine the light of understanding upon the mystery of dreams. Every episode of his Dreamscapes program features real dreamers gifted with rare insight into their nocturnal visions. New Dreamscapes episodes appear every week on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, and other video hosting platforms, as well as free audiobooks exploring the psychological principles which inform our dream experience, and much, much more. To join the wizard as a guest, reach out across more than a dozen social media platforms and through the contact page at BenjaminTheDreamWizard.com, where you will also find the wizard's growing catalog of historical dream literature available on Amazon, documenting the wisdom and wonder of exploration into the world of dreams over the past 2,000 years. That's Benjamin the Dream Wizard on YouTube and at BenjaminTheDreamWizard.com. On to being a small child, I believed the dream, and then I still continue to have it to this day in my late 30s. Wow. So I think this one's pretty potent. It is a very important. common, yeah, it's a common theme, I think, for people. And I think you'll also see that, you know, that anxious state, that like natural anxiety that I've always dealt with, you know? For sure. Um, um, so, well, the, the way uh, uh, a lot of folks yeah. want to, or what it seems intuitive to them is to say, let me tell you about the general concept of this dream and the themes I've noticed, which is good. We're, uh, but I want to get there the other way around by saying, what's the most recent instance of this dream? And then once we kind of dial in what that might mean to you specifically, we can look at how it connects to the other ones. Okay. So you, yeah. You, yeah. So more recently, but always, I am um, 
trying to fly. And I have, instead of the arms spread and soaring with like wings, I have my hands like, you know, like imagine your thumbs and your armpits like chicken wings and I'm flapping, flapping, flapping like so hard. It's like stressful. I'm panting. And often, you know, I can get a few inches off the ground. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm doing really well, the highest I've ever gotten is the treetops. And I'm like, whoa, like I am doing good. And people are somewhat impressed. They're like, wow, you're, you're you can fly. Not everybody can fly. <laughs> um, but it's such a struggle. Like I get tired and I fall down. I start going lower down. Um, but it's not an easy, like you'd imagine, like, I know, like I, I've often wanted to, to soar and that's what I do want to do in the dreams, but it's just a struggle. So the, the most recent instance of this was pretty much a repetition of the exact typical pattern yes but getting as high as a treetop recently okay. that's that's the highest i've ever gotten um treetop or sometimes I, the reference point is like a um i think this one i there's treetops and there was uh the wires the electric wires so as as high as both of those in this one but it was a struggle i could only stay up there so long and come down okay. but that that is the highest i've gotten ever <laughs> i've never gotten to the clouds <laughs> trying to wrap up my notes here yeah okay so that is that's how we start you just kind of tell me the dream then we go back through it again so i've got a i have a process but it's not like a intentional process this is just how it started like people would tell me the dream and i'd say okay wait a minute let, let's go through it again and then that just became what i do so we got the the, the deep dive portion now and this is where we start pulling some things uh together and then that kind of blends into you know part three which is getting an answer that kind of tells a story about why this type of thing might be happening to you um where were you in, in a, a physical environment, you said there was trees and telephone wires. So you're in a city, you're in a forest, you're in a particular place you've been before on a vacation. What's the physical environment as far as you can tell? As far as I can tell, um, it wasn't one particular environment in this recent dream. It was, you know, kind of more rural. Um, and there were people present, but it wasn't like a city sort of people. It was like just a few people, um, present that's not anyone in particular I can name that I know, but I knew that they were like familiar people, um, kind of interacting with me about it. Uh, but it, it was pretty just genetic, generic, more rural sort of environment for this dream. Okay. And you knew it was rural because, uh, dirt road, um, you know, uh, or fields, fields were fields all around yeah and you were in a field of a of you know maybe like low grass or something or um, knee high or i think i went a variety of places there were definitely fields and then the, the um trees um sort of area too um i remember being in fields at some point okay that were nearby Good deal. Okay. So in the very beginning, you're in an area where at least around you are fields and it looks, that's how you knew it was rural. There's people present, but they're not specific people, but they are familiar mm -hmm. people. It's a small group of people. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, a, I like to do the counterfactuals of like, so it was not specifically your husband or your, you know, ninth grade gym teacher. It wasn't, uh, your, no. your boss from a previous job. It also wasn't a large crowd of anonymous people that were hostile. Oh. I mean, all these things, it was not, it was a no. small yeah, it group of familiar people, no one specific, but just the concept of familiar. Well, at least you know them, they know you. And, um, maybe you would assume a small group of people you're familiar with would be generally supportive. And it would be not I, an intimidatingly large audience to perform in front of, so to speak. All, do all these things resonate? Yeah, but or? I I was wanting to kind of perform. I was wanting to do it um, and show them that I could do it. And some people were like, oh, that's cool. She can fly. And then other people were like, oh, okay. Like kind of didn't really make a big difference. Um, it wasn't a big reaction from anybody in either direction. It was kind of um, – like uh neutral neutral positive to neutral negative like okay. Eh, that's okay i'd say that's significant <laughs> too the idea that it no matter the response and you gave yourself an uh or an impression of 
the range and that it was both positive and negative, but mild, but generally mild, yeah, just, just mild. to give yourself that range. It wasn't people who are like mouths open. Oh my God. And some people who are like, she's so dumb. Uh, it was just, <laughs> no, it was just, it just kind of, uh, and, and that's interesting. So we'll just hang on to that for a minute or, put, or, or, or let it, let it percolate in the background, like just to acknowledge that it's there and, and uh, maybe come back around to it. But even if we don't address it again, it'll maybe inform form where we're going. So any, any impression of how you, of yourself in, in that environment, um, how you were dressed specifically or not? Um, no, no impression of how I was dressed, but more my feeling, my feeling was like, frustration and I woke up as always like in the flapping where I'm starting to to slowly lower down toward the earth um and lose lose steam for it uh because it's such hard work to fly um and just kind of like general like why why am I making this harder than it needs to be you know like why can't I soar why can't it's a dream like especially close to waking up you like realize kind of it's a dream like it's like it's a dream. Why can't I make it? Now I haven't always realized it was a dream, but I do remember this last time being like frustrated because it's been so many great things. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you're coming out of it, there's that there's that kind of twilight haze where you're like, I'm becoming aware of myself, but I'm actually still experiencing the visions and the sensations yeah. a little bit. I've 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 existed in those moments and then that's that's where I bring out things like um you know, it's like the, it's the ironic the dream wizard doesn't remember his dreams. I believe everyone dreams every night, the entire night. But the most I usually come out of a night's sleep with is if I'm lucky. Uh, one one recent instance was I'm standing by the rear, the open rear passenger side door of a white car. That's it. That's the entire dream experience. No idea why I'm standing there. Nothing is happening. I'm just standing there with an open door passenger side um, very surprised. I, I even recognized it was a white car, but like, what do I do with that? I, there's all kinds of things I could do with it, I suppose. And I've done more with less, but I, there's just, I, I really envy folks that have like entire narratives, adventures that they go on. <laughs> reoccurring. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do have actually one, uh, just to, this just came to mind. I did have one reoccurring dream, well, not reoccurring, but one flight dream, one in my entire life that I can hmm. remember. I was at the end of a cul cul-de-sac. And there was a, a brief stretch of, of road heading to a busy intersection, you know, a T, T intersection. And I did the same thing, but I was flapping, not, not chicken wings, but I was flapping my arms and <laughs> each, each, I was able to push against the air and raise a little bit. So I might've gone all of 50, 60 feet total. And it was a, just a slow parabola of me reaching a peak and slowly coming down before I reached the busy intersection. Entire dream. Oh. Residential neighborhood, no idea what that means. Yeah. But that was the it's one fly. Similar. I've never soared either. I've never just yeah. up into the sky. And then I've talked to people who are like, oh, I fly all the time. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> you're so, I know, you're so right? Lucky. That's such a superpower. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah long story short on that i'm telling you my dreams um well i don't have any so they're they're rare it's like a gem a gem in the in the in the uh, discovered washing away the dirt um so uh sense of yourself no no particular style of dress I, I rattled doorknobs they don't come open that's fine it was more this this sensation of your feelings there was a bit of you wanted to perform in a sense of you wanted people to see that you had an ability Right. That's kind of that idea. Like, look what I can do. And not in the uh, Stuart sense off mad TV. Look what I can do. And he just does something silly. But like, look, look, I actually have an ability. Uh, does that kind of resonate with you? Yeah, like, I think, let me show you what I can I do. Think it does. I wish that didn't resonate with me, but that, that does resonate with me. Yeah. Well, and I get that, too. And that might be. I think that might be significant. You wish that it didn't yeah. resonate with you. Why? I wish I didn't care, you know, like whether or not people see or not. Yeah, right. I'd there is that. That that's a valid perspective yeah. too. But I think that might be not to put you on the spot too much, but I think there might be a part of you that is a f afraid is not the right word, but uncomfortable with yeah, I think afraid. Ap appearing to draw attention to yourself. Like really, I want you to look at me, and that's it, you're not comfortable with that want, the the desire to yeah. be seen performing. Uh, accomplishing so i think it might be something there just to, again not to put you on the spot yeah, and make, make you yeah, uncomfortable but the idea of hang on to that it, it, me too me too the worst <laughs> possible i haven't had a birthday since i was 16 years old and now i've had birthdays i'm not dead yet but my parents threw a surprise party and invited people i wasn't expecting it i 
they were friends from school, sure, but it was a surprise. I was the center of attention. It was the worst, one of the worst experiences of my life of just, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. And I, I feel like I'm being rude to people if I tell them to go home and I just sucked it up and endured it. And there's, okay. So they were there to celebrate me. It's your, it's your birthday, buddy. We're here. We love you. And I'm like, I don't want to be the center of attention. Please. No, no, stop this. But then there's another side of me too. That's like, you know, if I do something skillful, I would like people who matter to me to recognize it and go, that was pretty good. You did a thing yeah. that was not easy to do and you deserve some credit for it. So there's, I, I'm in conflict with myself on, on that same it's thing. It's human nature. I yeah, it I is. think it's yeah. human nature. It's like, I am, I wrote a book and I'm here on promotion right now, going on a podcast tour, talking to different people about my mm -hmm. new book. Right. And my last book, the tour was canceled because of COVID. Oh, yeah. Oh, I sold terrible. everything I knew. I mean, I, I, everything I owned to travel the world because the book is released in 15 languages. So I was going to Japan and Germany and all over the world. Oh, wow. I was going to yeah. live on the road and then made it to South America, my first stop, and then COVID oh, hit. Oh. And so oh, the whole terrible. thing ended up being canceled. Um, So I haven't ever had the experience of like, writing something I'm proud of or putting something I'm proud of out in the world and then like actually talking about it, it to a higher extent like I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that the first thing that it strikes my mind when I hear that is that's not fair. That's, that's a horrible, <laughs> that's a horrible injustice and I want to make it right. So I, I'm like, can you do it now? Can you just go in and just arrange a tour of like, I released this book three years ago, but I'm going to promote it now. Is that something that's never crossed your mind or that's just not happening? It's like impractical well, or I live in Hawaii now. The whole mm. thing like led me to this life that I love and I live by the ocean. So a podcast tour is perfect because I don't have to leave my there home. There are, there are giant turtles swimming in my backyard yet like earlier and I can just take breaks out here and relax. And I've just got married, met the love of my life through the, the journey. So I'm grateful for the journey and that Fair it enough. led me to do it this way. Isn't, um, so that's it's the, pretty cool. That's the flip side of it too, is like, I've had some catastrophes, disasters, uh, bad things afflicted upon me, uh, maybe partly through my own fault. You know, you know how that goes. And I'm like, I don't want this to happen. And I suffer and I come out the other side of it in a better place. I'm like, what just happened? How did that how am I in a better place after a catastrophe than I was before? That blows my mind. It seems like you're in a similar, similar situation where you went through something that was, it robbed you of a dream and it was unfair and, it was, <laughs> and, and you're in a better place now. And you're like, no, this is good. This is better. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's amazing. It, is. it helped me chill. You know, I think COVID was the great pause for many of us mm. and it, that time period forced me to meditate more and I'm so grateful for, yeah. you know, slowing down and now taking pauses through my day and appreciating. And so it, re it led me in the right path. As, as rigorously scientific as I am about most things, that's that type of human experience is what leans me in the direction of magic and a plan. Perhaps I can't explain it and I can't predict it. And I couldn't tell you if it's going to happen to you, but it's happened to me and I'm like, that's blows it blows my mind i don't know there's a better way to say it but i'm just like I, it's serendipitous. serendipitous yeah it's serendipitous yeah, unbelievable um long story short on that a long tangent out, out of your dream but it, it, we got there through um you know discussing the idea of so in this particular dream experience and i think you'll find this reminiscent of other experiences as we as we get to talking about them and as we dial this one in a little bit more and get kind of get the through line you can you'll see that it represents itself in different ways the setting might change the people nearby might change the the process you go through of trying to fly and how how that feels to you and and uh, how it plays itself out all those slight variations even though it's the typical flying dream and the the, the purpose is the flight it's going to have shades around it that vary throughout your life based on the different circumstances you're in and the different circumstances of your life at that at that time <coughs> excuse me um so we hadn't got any further than the setting and who's there and the very beginning and how did you approach the the flight thing i mean did you was there a ritual beforehand or just wait if, uh, arms in the armpits and let's go um yeah arms in the armpits and you flap 
you have to flap hard. I mean, it Did is you start a struggle. Running, running start or in, in standing in place? Yeah, I, uh, I think I, I, I do run. Yeah, I do run um, to get that forward momentum as well. I do start running. Um, and that adds to the struggle too, the exertion, the effort necessary. Okay. And then thinking back to the, to the, events as they transpire you get a running start you're putting in the effort you notice the effort how quickly do you ascend is there an arc a trajectory is there um change a change of scenery kind of what happens next uh this time i mean getting that high i could feel as an accomplishment like i could feel like whoa i've, I've gotten this high um and it it really like it's just at a diagonal kind of gradual getting up that high. It didn't take too long, but sustaining the height is what becomes difficult. Kind of like you described, you know, the the arc that your yours creates. I mean, I can only sustain it so long and then I start to lose steam and go down. And it's a soft fall, you know, it's the same sort of that you described, actually. It's kind of like you just keep lo losing steam, you keep trying, you keep trying, but like your efforts can't keep you up. So you just slowly come down. Okay. And in the beginning, there were not actually trees or telephone poles or whatever, or mm -hmm. power lines. And, but, but you noticed at the I height. So you don't remember? That's fine. If you I don't either... remember. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know there was fields at some point and interactions with people, but this one I didn't have as much vivid until the end, which is where I'm really at the tree height and then starting to struggle and go down. That's where it's like gotcha. becomes so vivid and I'm waking up. <laughs> so there's no specific idea of like I was a I could see in the distance I was approaching trees and telephone lines and then that's when I peaked. But you noticed it was at the moment when you realize this is the height of my journey or, or, or ascent, that's when you know you gave yourself this, uh, this kind of a, um, the concept of a benchmark, like, like what, mm -hmm. what do I compare yeah. this to? And you're like, well, it's as tall as a tree or a telephone pole. And that's, yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah. so yeah, what stood out in your mind was this idea of, and it's, um, we were talking about social comparison earlier and that it gives us a lot of anxiety. It's like you, we always, compare ourselves to something well have i gone further than other people or have i kept at least kept up with what other people appear to be average capable of um there's not a sense of that specifically like it didn't run through your mind oh i know this is what most other people can do but no you, but you nobody yourself, else is flying nobody else in the dream no, is flying yeah i don't think ever ever i've seen anyone else in the dream fly yeah but if you um Think of it from that perspective of like a benchmark or a, uh, a, a, a what other words might come to mind of like, here's how to measure my accomplishment. Yeah. I don't know if you think I about think that. I think it was a, a new minute. height. Mm -hmm. It was a new height, you know? Um, so there was that feeling of like, okay, this is a new height. Um, kind of a little bit of accomplishment. But then ultimately frustration because I'm tired because I, I bet I'm moving in some way in my body to represent the efforts, um, as, especially since I am somebody who has that history of sleepwalking and moving my body, you know, at, with my dreams, doing things like opening windows and like, you know, in my dream and I literally open a window in real life like I do that. <laughs> so I'm yeah. sure I'm moving. Yeah, those are the most dangerous things. And people have reported um, climbing out of a window onto a rooftop and doing cartwheels along the peak of a roof. I mean, that's something oh. people have done in their sleep. And, uh, you know, cooking entire meals with a stove and open Oh, flames. yeah, that's a common one. Well, yeah. yeah. Or midnight snacking. Me telling right? you that story. <laughs> <laughs> my story is just as bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that'll yeah, you get to some of that stuff and it's like, it's time to talk to a professional. And there's one guy, uh, I, I think his name's David Sedaris from uh, PBS. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep, sleep. Oh, no, I I think it's Mike Biblio. Mike Biblio. Biblio. He's the yeah. one that did it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And he actually has to sleep in, um, in a straight jacket, basically in, in a sheet that lets his head poke out, but doesn't let him get out of bed. And then he can move around all he yeah. wants underneath the covers. That's sometimes that's what you got to do. It's better than yet yeah, climbing on top of furniture because there's a, an insect jackal 
<laughs> and I went back well, to sleep I, I knowing there was a jackal not, in the room. <laughs> sometimes that that's what you got to do. But on the other hand, if you can get to the root of the problem, right, which is the that's anxiety. True. I truly believe the anxiety is the root of the problem. Like he, when he had his child, they had to lock doors in between him and the child because they were afraid. Like, what if he sleepwalks and does something to the child? Like, yeah. that's, you know, I think – Getting to the root of the anxiety, so you change that behavior, is is what I've done, and um, yeah. and I, I think that's the better route than the straight jacket. But you know, you got to do what you got to do in the meantime. <laughs> so. That's true. You know, precautionary measures, unless you can discover something else. And and we don't know if he ever tried meditative stuff. Um, I mean, he yeah. gave us some great stories, but like, I'm the Hulk. I'm the Hulk. <laughs> yeah, that's such a good, that's such a good story. I don't even care if it's true. He could be making it all up. I don't believe he is, but that's just it's a great story either way. Um. Okay, so for you, back back to you. Sorry, I go on so many tangents. Um, I think it's possible they're all relevant. There might be a reason we needed to talk about that stuff and then come back. We'll see. Um, for you, so there was a there was a, there was a moment of noticing when it became a struggle to when you couldn't rise any higher, and it became a struggle to even maintain that height. And you actually yes. you're feeling like I'm because it's a struggle because I'm losing energy or my ability to maintain that's as high as I can go. I'm on my way I'm on the other side of the slope. Um, so at that moment, there was something about that recognition that brought the idea of the height of trees or power lines. And, and I mean, if you're in a city tree, even in a city, trees are pretty big and power lines too. They're, they're up there. That's it's far enough that if you fell from that height, you're breaking a leg. You know, most people can't yeah. sustain that kind of, so it's not an insignificant height. It's not inches off the ground. It's not into the clouds. <laughs> It's not shoot for the moon and you might hit the stars. It's uh, you're still pretty high. It's it's what am I trying to say? It's like it feels to me like it's not an insignificant accomplishment. It's no, a it's decent. Not. And sometimes height. it has been inches. So, you know, it, that has been uh, typical, actually, is to be inches or just a couple of feet. Fair enough. Yeah. So this is actually I, I, as soon as you said that, that this is as high as I've ever gone. And it's the most recent dream and you're following yeah. on the success of new ventures in life you found an ideal yeah. beautiful place to live love of your life you're married successfully published book tour all of that good stuff i mean there's reasons to liken this to flying pretty high you know maybe not yeah. as high as yeah. Yeah, I'm, i am no joe rogan but people like to talk to me i'm happy with that i'm flying at a decent level for, i don't want to be joe rogan but yeah yeah <laughs> i don't that's, think that's you I'm, do either <laughs> that's where i'm going with some of this and it does seem to be related to your and it's, it's good to talk to people because it feels like it's related to your lifelong anxiety about well lifelong anxiety issues in general being sensitive in that regard perhaps and yeah. looking specifically at your um like an honest self-assessment of ability to accomplish I don't know if I'm going in a direction that feels right to you. And and, and also that we, we discussed a little earlier, the idea of a fear of letting yourself be seen to, to, to be accomplishing. There's, there's like a, like a, not a faux humility, but I think we all want to be properly humble. And sometimes we humble ourselves too much, even though we could be yeah. a little more, Hey, what I did was actually pretty awesome. And it's not, prideful to say so that was something and i did it and i'm proud of myself and that's okay you know that's i think there's a yeah. there's a there's a, le a level of humility in accurately assessing your own ability you know that that doesn't go too far uh i'm gonna stop there and let you respond though yeah i mean i think that that's true and also part of the job when you write a book is then promoting it like when you get a book contract that they're not just paying you to write the book they're paying you to promote it sell, too. sell like, the book that's, they, they want to make money too yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly so it's part of what you signed up to do <laughs> yeah yeah so the the theme that kind of suggests itself to me and these are just i just get ideas this is not i don't have all the answers i'm not inside your head you're inviting me in so i shine a light around stand behind your shoulder and shine a light around say you see what i see uh you know that kind of thing so wh where i'm coming from on that is um getting the feeling of an idea of wondering am i good enough yeah. there's something something that i had better i had a better phrasing for it before i explained myself to death and then i lost my train of thought um but the idea of or allowing yourself to be good enough or you know a lot of anxiety is is can i meet the demands of a situation usually in a life or death context saber tooth tiger but it's also the demands of 
the social pressures, the demands of, of keeping myself alive in just a normal context of, well, I got I got to do well at my job so I get a paycheck so I can afford a place to live. There can be life-threatening elements in there too. And, and if you set yourself a goal of success, am I going to be able to f- fly that high? Am I going to be able to meet that yeah. judge of my success? And, and am I making it harder than it needs to be? Right. I think that's, that's what it always is for me is like, why did I flap my arms? Why didn't I just open my arms? Mm. Like, why was I flapping? Why wasn't I just handicap yourself a little bit by not getting, giving yourself full wing extension? Yeah, exactly. Why don't I spread the full wingspan and just soar and make it easier for myself? So I think that's what always comes up for me is like, why do I struggle or make it harder than it needs to be? Which I think a lot of people with anxiety uh, can kind of relate to is like the anxiety and the worries um, make it harder than it needs to be. And I have gotten them really under control, you know, f- to for the most part, but obviously it's something you, it's always there. It's human nature. Like when yeah. you have these sort of thoughts or like, Am I doing enough or am I doing the right things, right? When you see other people suggesting you do something else or something like that, yeah. yeah. And th- there's very much also wrapped up in this a um, you know old habits being hard to break type of thing, old mind mm-hmm. old mindsets hard to let go of. So if you had yeah. say 30 years of approaching life through a certain intellectual lens of understanding and then you discover yoga and really the power of meditation and it changes everything you still you're still carrying 30 years of what if or you know that that what if something terrible happens what if what if i should be worrying more than i am that's really hard to let go of because that's been our that's been our comfort zone in, in, in that regard for the longest time is like if i worry enough everything will be okay if i don't worry enough everything's going to shit so you worry as much as possible to make sure everything is okay and you're miserable the entire time it's like what a trap because <laughs> you can't worry about nothing that's impo- that's not condu- that's not healthy either uh, it's some things you got to worry about yeah. so it's like it's these tools of of survival that we have to use in the proper you know the sweet spot the golden mean as 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 they used to say but uh, what what came to mind too is is the idea of um more metaphors for um and that's in my opinion what what most dream imagery is is it's dreams love puns metaphors there it's similes it's, it's mostly that kind of stuff um, and in, in in image and behavioral form and, and whatnot but the idea of holding back the idea of a uh timid half measures in a way now not not, not that it is exactly but these are the, the uh, associated thoughts that come to my mind it's like if you um if you're afraid to spread spread your wings and fully soar you're you're gonna handicap yourself with the chicken wings mm-hmm. and you're not going to get as far and it's going to make it extra so you're going to struggle more than you have to because you're not fully committed you haven't fully opened up to the potential because that's the more yes. you open up the more vulnerable you are to failure to over exerting yourself in a way that is counterproductive uh, especially if you're not confident that's where the timidity comes came to my mind is like if you're not confident you're doing the right thing you're gonna you're going to approach it cautiously. You dip a toe in the water instead of jumping in with both feet. Uh, but then again, again, on the other side of it, you don't want to dive headfirst into water. You don't know how deep it is. So there's like, again, that that balance. I'm going to stop there for a second, see if you had any thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I feel confident in life. I don't feel confident about flying. So... Mm. Um, I have always felt like if I could build that confidence about flying, it would bring me to that next level, you know, in life, it would open up that full yeah. opportunities or the full, um, expansion vulnerability. So it's like, it's like, I feel in my life, in my waking hours that I'm ready for that. And I do feel like because I've been improving my sleep that I'm facilitating this environment where I could you know, do the right thing in my sleep too. And I, I felt like if I could have this breakthrough in my sleep, it would align. And maybe the breakthrough in the life needs to happen first or the sleep happen first. I don't know what needs to happen first, but yeah. I feel like it's going to happen together as it goes to that next level. So it's like, yeah. I am confident, but I haven't like opened up to that next level. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if you got back to me in a week or two saying, I had another dream and I was in the clouds, man. It happened, yeah. And, you know, just be, and this that happens all the time with, with people that talk to me about, you know, it's like when we get into what is this, 
what are you trying to say to yourself about your own experience? A lot of these dreams are, are thought experiments or, uh, it's, it's, it's a, um, direct observation of ourselves. This is what it looks like where I'm at right now or a thought experiment. What if I approach something differently? What if, how do I feel about a particular idea? Uh, what, what, what might happen if I approach this relationship with another person from a different angle? What do I think are the likely results? We can think through all that stuff in, in our waking life. And we do very often, but then a lot of times it gets into our dreams as well. And especially with these recurring dreams, it's, it's like we've, we've, um, distilled certain, self-concepts or situational understandings into very iconic forms, the flying dream, the falling dream, the being late or naked in class dreams, a sudden test you didn't study, the the very metaphorical of being unprepared for things or being disorganized so it makes you late or uh, suddenly having stability removed, um, falling off a cliff, I've got nothing solid to stand on, nothing supporting me, not my friends, my family, not my own abilities. Uh, so uh, we start with those layers of, of, of common, you know, human experience, uh, and then we can tr- drill it down. Okay. What is it for you specifically? So yeah, especially if you've had this, um, you know, lifelong anxiety issues, you've, it sounds to me like you've distilled it into the metaphor of flying and how grounded you are in, in a sense in, in reality and how far away from the stability of your own two feet you're willing to allow yourself to go mm, in, mm-hmm. in a sense like about it's something something zing for you there yeah yeah there's yeah a, yeah it's and it depends sometimes we're told don't don't let your head get in the clouds keep yourself grounded keep yourself practical yeah i think i also it's not like i don't want to be famous that's not a yeah. dream i have but i want my work to be out there and so there's this kind of conflict where it's like okay well what's the best way to get my work to be out there is like probably have a million youtube subscribers right yeah that's not you know famous like people aren't going to recognize me on the street so drop that fear because that's not even really famous um yeah i feel i feel the same way too feeling yeah it's like i don't want a million subscribers i don't want that kind of pressure i don't need that kind of money even uh you know i'd I'd like to make a little more than i do but oh i don't want to sell a million books i don't want to sell zero books zero is not okay Mm -hmm. and a million is not necessary somewhere in the middle somewhere i want a, a certain group of people to say hey we liked what you do enough to pick up what you got and 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 uh report this has value to us. This, thank you for doing what you did. It's just that validation, you know, and it doesn't have to be excessive. There's a couple of different ways to look at this too, is that, um, mm-hmm. you may be telling yourself you should want to fly higher. Now that's one way to look at it. And it's maybe not as resonant because there is frustration in your mind with the inability to do so. It's like, yeah. so you may actually want to have that experience more than you feel you're able to or capable of at the moment or that something's holding you back from. Um, but it also can be that idea of maybe I've got it in my head that I need to fly higher than the treetops. Maybe that's actually impressive. I don't know many people who yeah. can, I don't know any human who can. So just that alone <laughs> that's is very good point. You, right. That, and even if, even accepting if that's, it. Yeah. 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 There, there may be some layer of it. And these are a lot of different ideas. Like I'm planting so many seeds, like the next time you have this kind of a dream, something might change <sighs> some different perspective on the experience of like, maybe you do open your arms fully. Cause we talked about it. Maybe you do get to the height of the treetop and you're like, I can just stay. I can just stay at this exactly. and it's effortless. And I don't, do I need to go any higher? Effortless. Maybe I'll try that's, that. That's what I'm ready for. Yeah. Is yeah. that at, I, the struggle part of it is what I would like to let go of. Yeah. And yeah, maybe the treetops and having that different perspective would be a great place to be. Uh, and just to appreciate that and then to look at how far I came when you look down for, <laughs> at the ground and, and be able to appreciate that. But also maybe I can look up, maybe I can go on my back and backstroke up there. I look up at yeah. the sky. Right. Yeah. And there may be, uh, there's so many different ways to look at this too. I mean, it may be that, and, and I wrote a, I think I wrote a tweet or whatever, Z, whatever they call it now recently. Don't follow me on X, by the way, it's a whole bunch of political nonsense. It's just, it has nothing to do with any of this dream stuff. Um, <laughs> but I wrote a tweet recently where it's like, the, I think there's a phenomenon with a lot of, Kids today, kids today, I'm old enough. I got the gray hair, so I'm starting to talk about kids today. But I think the past generations have failed to communicate to future generations that merely surviving is a struggle. It's going to take effort to 
just to keep yourself alive. And if you want more than that, you're going to have to work even harder. And it's like, it's not fair. It's not good. It's not right. It's just true. It's like, it's hard to keep the human body and the human species alive. I think I'm questioning alive. that. Maybe. I think I'm questioning the truth of that. And I think that's what, uh, you know, I believed. Um, and I do think my parents taught me that. And now I'm like, and especially seeing me and my partner, we go beyond what our parents had imagined for themselves and lifestyle and doing the things that we love and going for our dreams. And and it's just like, I think that maybe I'm actually questioning that. I have the opposite experience. I was taught that and I'm questioning, does life need to be so hard? Do you have to work so hard? Especially now that I'm in a career that's like my passion, right? Mm. Maybe it's like doing that is it doesn't even feel like work when you're doing the, the things that's that you true. love, right? It doesn't that's have true. to be so hard, such a struggle. And when it does feel so hard, you know, whatever the thing that feels hard posting on TikTok, whatever, maybe that's not the thing you were supposed to do, right? True. Do the thing that feels feels more natural for you. There's a lot of noise out there. And so I'm questioning whether it needs to be so hard. And I think, um, you know, meditation helps me question that too. And relaxation and getting better sleep. It's helping me question, does it have to be such a struggle? Is that is Maybe that so. me by nature? Like, right, I've labeled myself as an anxious person. I've been labeled as an anxious person. Is that me by nature? Does it have to be? Yeah, for sure. These are all great questions. And that's why I throw this stuff out uh, into the world. Like, So what I was responding to was a very specific thing of someone complaining about, say, a 40-hour work week. And now we can, we can tease that apart a little bit and say, well, should it be... Should it require a 40 hour work week to survive? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, certainly there was a, my response to this person was, don't be surprised that you're going to have to break a sweat. This was my mindset yeah. is like, so if anyone was told the opposite, that everything should be easier than it is, they're going to look at what is otherwise the golden mean normal yeah. amount of work. And they're going to look at it and go, why is everything so hard? And I'm like, is it really is it really so? And what came to my mind yeah. was the uh, was the Princess Bride quote, uh, which I think is just fantastic. You know, it's life is pain, princess. Anyone who tells you different is selling something. It's like the human condition it requires, or is you're going to encounter a lot of unpleasantness, a lot of pain and suffering. It's kind of unavoidable. Now, it doesn't have to be pure misery, unending torment from one end to the other. That's off the scale too. It's not going to be heaven, and it's not going to be hell. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. But you're not going to get out of it without a few bumps and bruises, yeah, and, and maybe a little Agreed. bit of worry and some tragedy. That that's kind of where Absolutely. I was coming from on that. But no, you raise it. Yes, I don't. I don't feel you're contradicting me. I think you're adding that nuance of. Um, now wait a minute. Don't set the bar so high that you are killing yourself to reach it because maybe yes. you, you don't need to put that expectation on yourself. That was also yes, par and, part of what I was getting to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think both of them because, I mean, not to say I don't have a forty-hour work week, right? <laughs> like the work when we work out, right? I'm going to work out right after that. That's a great example. Like yeah. that's hard, You're but going you feel to better afterwards. But it's worth it. Yes. It's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Or this mm. concept of hormesis that we um, experiment with is like things like exercise or an ice bath or that I did this morning, you know, like to, to strengthen me internally. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, we have to find that balance. Um, yeah. But the worry, the anxiety, the should I be doing this or that, that extra that we add on top in our head, that's yeah. the part that, you know, does that have to be a struggle? Like, pain is inevitable, as you said, and the philosophy of meditation supports this. Suffering is optional. Mm. The, the things you add on top of it, that's that's what I'm I'm referring to. So I, I'm, we're in absolute agreement is oh, it's yeah. this balancing act. Yeah. And that's a great thing, too, to use those meditations for is to hold those ideas about like, am, is, are my expectations reasonable? Am I setting the bar too high or too low? for myself? Am I capable of more? Should I be a little less lazy or should I give myself a break? Because wow, did I aim high and it's no surprise. I'm not there yet. Maybe that's reason, a reasonable yeah. thing to do as well. So I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So if we've, if we've gotten a decent understanding of what this series of dreams seems to be clustered around, and I like to be that loose with it. Just, just, just to give ourselves some room to play with the idea. Um, 
then you should see going forward that these dreams, as they come back, they change and you're a little more, um, a little more removed, as we were saying, from a little more meditative yeah. on the experience of the dream itself in the dream itself. So that's what, yeah, I had one guy, um, he had a uh, same recurring dream. This is back way back episode 12. He had the same recurring dream over and over again. He'd get into the backyard of this house and these shadow people would be there and they would just beat the hell out of him and they would not let him move past them. And in the very next dream, he, he got back to me and he said, I did not try to push past them as I usually do. I stopped and talked to them and they were really cool guys. And they were just like, dude, we're just looking out for you. you you're not ready for this. And he was like, oh, wow, that blew my mind. I had a little reclamp moment, you know, I'm like I actually helped somebody. Uh, so I'm hoping you have wow, that same experience, too, so where cool. the next flying dream you have is something's different about the stress, the strain, the struggle, the performance, the the, 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 the worries, the, yeah. the, the self-assessment, all of the stuff that's going on with it. Hopefully yeah. pulling these ideas apart and seeing how they're connected to each other should give you hopefully a, a, a better experience of it next time. That's my hope. So <laughs> I'd like to look I'd like to look down at the grass and the people and the things that are below me and yeah. be like, Well, I I've come so far and I can go back down or up. It's my choice, right? Yeah. Like let That's yourself, it, let yourself like enjoy the flight, enjoy the process of yeah. the success or the accomplishment. Yeah. That's a big yeah. deal. Not worried, yeah. not worried so much about just making it happen, but enjoying the happening. Yeah. That's a big enjoying deal. Enjoying it. <clears throat> yeah. Good and I'm deal. doing that in life. So let's do it in the dream world. <laughs> I think so. And I think the more you do it in life, the more it'll be reflected in dreams. You're like, yeah, this is more in line with what it's actually like for me in my lived daily life experience that's pretty much where we pull our dreams from is what am i going through what am i thinking about what what are my yeah s successes and struggles so um well if you think we've gotten a pretty good answer i think you're almost out of time i want to get you out of here before your before your time limit so yeah good deal. Yeah, and if if anybody out there you know has struggled with anxiety sleep issues definitely go to meditation for the real world.com where you can check out the book and also get the audio meditations because I incorporated music that is specifically engineered to change your brain waves. There's even a song at nice. the end that's Delta brain waves. It's sleep by the sea is what it's called and can help you get into that sleep state. So definitely check that out at meditation for the real world.com. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do that uh, again for you. This once again, this has been our friend Ann Swanson from Hawaii. Uh, author of Meditation for the Real World. You can find her book at meditationfortherealworld.com. Uh, for my part, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. 17 currently available works of historical dream literature, the most recent, uh, The Fabric of Dreams by Catherine Taylor Craig. All this and more at benjamintheDreamWizard.com. Uh, and head on over to benjamintheDreamWizard.locals.com. Uh, join the community there. And uh, I'll just say once again, and thank you for being here. Great conversation. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody out there, thank you for watching. <laughs>